Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to go on a little tour of Peterborough and not the city centre so much but some historic sites and ruins around the outside of it. Uh, first we're at Longthorpe Tower which is just outside Peterborough about six miles and yeah no idea what we're going to find but after that we're going to go to Caister Church ruins. Um, yeah, no idea anything about that either, but we'll go and have a look at that. That was on the map. Following that, we're going to go to Fotheringay Castle, which is where Mary Queen of Scots was killed, executed. And then we'll end the day with a bit of car camping. Got a new induction hobs to show you. Uh, new additions to me set up rather than the gas canisters and gas rings. I found the gas rings were a little bit in the wind. If it was a bit breezy, it was, they were just a nightmare. So I've got the eco flow with me. Um, so we'll probably have a little look and see how we can do some car camping cooking with some induction hobs. So yeah, let's crack on. The other thing today is it's supposed to be the hottest day of the year so far. 30, 31 degrees I heard. So it's a lovely town, a lovely little village this. Lovely little village. Anyway. Church has got like an old fashioned bell on the outside, look. It's quite cool, isn't it? So long to thought towers up here, look. But you park at the church with its national trust. And hopefully it's up here. There it is, people. Adventurers. There it is. English heritage, but it's not open. Seven pound for an adult if you weren't a member. There you go. It's only open Saturdays and Sundays. Story of my life, isn't it? They always seem to seem to come to places when they're shut. It's old, doesn't it? Interesting. I'll see if I can bang the drone up and have a little fly around or something and uh, tell you five interesting facts about Longthorpe Tower. <laughs> this medieval tower in the village of Longthorpe, it's just a ten minute drive from Peterborough, built in the 14th century, it's part of a fortified manor house and is famous for its well-preserved wall paintings dating back over 600 years. The five interesting facts about Longthorpe Tower. The wall paintings inside depict scenes from both the Bible and daily medieval life. It's one of the best preserved examples of domestic medieval wall paintings in the UK. The tower was originally built as a private residence for Robert Thorpe, a lawyer for Peterborough Abbey. The tower is a Grade 1 listed building, which means it's recognised as being of exceptional historical interest. Despite its age, the tower remained a private home until the 19th century. What a fascinating place. But let's move on to the next place. So where we are. In Castor. Oh, we've got this church here, it's not this isn't the ruin. But what a lovely setting. I'm not entirely sure where the church ruins are, but I'm assuming they're in this vicinity. Uh, let's go and have a look around and see what we can find. We've got an inf board here, look. What's this say? What a lovely place this is. Maybe you can have a walk around the paths. Let's have a look at the around the paths, see what we can find. It's interesting though. It saves on the gardener. Let's keep some sheep. Let's have a walk around here. So maybe this is the walls, the ruins walls. I don't know if you can read that. 
These fragments of Walling are the remains of one of the largest buildings in Roman Britain. They form part of the western range of a set of rooms with a building that extended across the top of the hill and underneath the church. And there you are then. Not entirely sure how you get to see them. I think we'll head back in. Maybe they've got a beer cellar. Alright, what we've got here? Look. Edmund Tyrrell Artis. Where you are standing was once the site of a huge Roman palace in a 2000 year, years ago. The second largest building excavated from Roman Britain, Castor Palace was built to impress. Perhaps the owner was a Roman governor in charge of the state controlled fens. Blah de blah de blah. There's the picture of the ruins right in front. So, I'm not sure where they are. It's not showing they're in here. There's all gravestones on them there. That's just my luck, isn't it? The ruins have been filled in when I'm coming. Anyway, let's have a look up here. Maybe they're up here. What a lovely little spot down there, look. I'm not going to go poking around down there. And I think we're back out onto the road here. Here, yeah, it's the same sign as what was around there. I can't find any ruins. What like what's on the the signposts and that? But what a beautiful place this is. That's the drive-in that we came up that we're about to leave. A beautiful place. Let me tell you, people. People go on about Peterborough being a quite a, a rough area, or an undesirable place to live but you've, you've only got to go three or four miles out of town and there's some really affluent lovely areas around Peterborough to explore. That's the church it's just a short drive from Peterborough. These ruins are part of a larger Anglo-Saxon Norman church complex that was once a major religious centre. The site has been used for religious purposes for over 1400 years, dating back to Roman times. The current church incorporates parts of the original Anglo-Saxon structure. The site is believed to be connected to the Roman temple that once stood here. Excavations have revealed artefacts from multiple periods, including Roman, Anglo-Saxon and Norman times. The church is named after a 7th century princess who founded a convent here. These ruins may be small, but they are steeped in history. Let's get on to the next one. So here we are at the next stop, and this is Barnack Hills and Holes. They look warm. They are. <laughs> We've been in the forest, so, but we're going back to the car now. Yeah, get a bit of shade. There's the board. It's now a natural nature reserve. So, yeah, but the good thing is, on entry, they actually provide you with poop bags for your dogs. So there you go. So we're going to have a walk around. And there is actually roots. Pointed out for you. So we're going to have a little wander around here. The interesting fact about this place is its uh, geological landscape. 
is literally hills and holes. And the reason for this is that it used to be a quarry, a limestone quarry. So it might look like a natural landscape, but it's actually the site of an ancient limestone quarry known as Barnock Hills and Holes, located eight miles from Peterborough. Yeah, it was a, a quarry, but it's been transformed back into a natural nature reserve. But the evidence of the quarry is still evident. There's some interesting facts about Barnack Hills Knolls. It's the limestone that was claimed from here when it was a quarry was used to build Peterborough Cathedral. The quarry dates back to Roman times where it's suggested it was used for over a thousand years. The site is now classed as a site of special scientific interest due to its unique and diverse flora. The area is a haven for flora and wildlife, such as rare species of orchids and butterflies. But just look at it. I've stood under a tree to get a bit of shade it's a warm one today, adventurers. A warm one today. I've entered the forest. And uh, there's even big holes in here. I don't know if the camera's gonna make that out, but yeah. And someone has been building shelters Either that, or they're going to have a mighty big bonfire. Actually looks quite a good one, doesn't it? <clears throat> if them sticks there are meant to be for a bonfire, I wouldn't light it there, mate. Light it outside a bit more. But yeah, looks quite a good one, that. The only problem with the hills and holes is either you're going up or you're going down. And there's all sorts of things kicking up out of the ground. I've been nearly over there a few times. But yeah, it is a warm one. And I think I've now found myself lost. I'm gonna head back along this way because there's a road there and I think that's the road I came along. So yeah, let's have a look up here. Now guys, I'm not going to put the drone up because it is a nature reserve and there is rare wildlife in there so I didn't see any signs not to but I'm not going to put the drone up there because I don't think you'd see an awful lot from above anyway um, and I think it's, uh, it's given a good example of the hills and holes just by walking around it's probably a better better vantage point for that anyway so we're going to move on to the next one which is fothering hay castle so here we are at fothering hay and uh come see the castle ruins and there's a pretty spectacular church here as well so i want to have a little look around that and I think that's open today, so we might have a little glance inside. So we're here. And it looks a bit odd, actually. Because you come in, it's, all, it's like a private road. And you've got a private building up there. Someone's just come out in the car, electric gates. Up there. More private gates and stuff, but it looks like a little farm building here, look. 
But yeah, here it is. Castle site. Dogs on leads. No metal detecting. Camping over there. Some glamping tents and stuff. And there's your imp board. So that's what it would have been like. Steps up onto the mound. Some people have just gone up. So we'll let them have a little explore up there before we venture up. There's a moat running around it. Love these places. So peaceful. King Richard III, youngest son of Richard, Duke of York, and, C and Cecily Neville, was born in this castle, October 2nd, 1452. In memory, Mary Stuart, Queen of Scots, beheaded in the Great Hall of Fotheringham Castle, 8th of February, 1586. Not sure what that means. Does that mean they can't decide whether it was 86 or 7? There you go, people are still leaving the flowers. But yeah, this rock here is the masonry from the castle keep. It was set up and protected by the Peterborough Archaeology Archaeology Society by permission of by the Lady Wantage. What a spot it is by the way. He's picked a grand old spot to stop here. Has. Got a beautiful bridge down there on the River Neen. And then that magnificent... I was going to say cathedral, it's not, it's a church. But we're going to have a look at that in a minute. Let's go and have a look at the top of the hill. So you get going up. And then the kind folk put some steps in to help you. And there we are. What a view. And to be on the hill of the castle <clears throat> where Mary Queen of Scots was beheaded. This was a massive moment in history. Some camper, camper down there. It's coming people, but yeah, what a spot, look at this. Beautiful, that church. The castle was the birthplace of King Richard III in 1452. Fotheringhay was the major seat of power for the House of York during the War of the Roses. Mary Queen of Scots was imprisoned here for a year before her execution and the castle was largely dismantled in the 17th century and much of its stone was reused in nearby buildings. Despite its ruinous state, Fotheringham remains a popular site for those interested in English history, especially fans of the Tudor period. Mary Queen of Scots. Let's go have a look around that church. So here we are then, St Mary and All Saints at Fotheringham. Uh, Fothering Hay, sorry. Church is open. But look at this for a walk in. Fitting of its. There's quite a few flies though. Fitting of its grandeur. Look at this. See if I can get a better vantage point of the church. Well, I will be able to because I'll put the drone up in a bit, but just look at this. It's kept beautifully. It's 
quite unique in that it's got, I think it's an octagonal tire, tower. Beautiful buttresses, look. Beautiful place. What a beautiful place. Now following a, only a small little village. So for it to have a castle and a church of this size, obviously speaks volumes about its power during War of the Roses. There's the bridge down there, look. I don't know what that wind sock's for. There you go, I've got some big windows this side. I suspect it was the same the other side originally. Look at that tower. Beautiful. Let's have a little scan around inside. Might be a bit cooler in there. was cooler in there, it's roasting out here. Absolutely roasting. Let's get back under this. So I wish I could give you some facts about Fobbering A Church, other than what you've just seen in there, but I haven't researched it and there's not a great signal out here for me to do that, so. There's a lot of flies in Fobbering A, or there was just there. I don't know whether they're coming off the River Neen or what, but. Ooh. I've arrived at my next destination and I'm hungry so I'm getting my kit out. So this is the induction hub I've got and it's a Vango Vango sizzle single. I've picked myself up some sausages so I'm gonna have a sausage sandwich. Can't beat a sausage sandwich can you with a bit of brown sauce wind's got up a little bit now which is what I mean about the, the gas ones with a flame but no good now it'll be blowing out all the time and the, the wind takes the heat away from it so yeah got me set up anyway so I'm just going to get a cup of tea on the go so I bought some premium pork sausages Lincolnshire's finest there you go got them in the fridge and I'm going to get them in that pan just going to wait for the kettle to boil. It will do that induction hob and the kettle at the same time. If we turn it on and turn it down. Can't see the LEDs very well on it, but if we pop it on free. And it auto detects the pan. Kettle's boiling anyway now. Look. There you go, you can hear that sizzling in the pan. Let's get the sausages open. Tea's made. Mm. You see me in there? Probably not. You can't beat a proper cup of tea. <clears throat> Old sausage. Sausages. 
cooking away. Look at that. Get in. Got some brown sauce. Eco flow kicking away nicely. Put the fridge back in there for now. Oh dear. Right, let's check this for spiders because it's been in my shed for a while. Yeah, the one thing I will say about this is the LEDs. You can't see the LEDs very well in the daylight. The good side of it is it's only 800 watts. Look at this out here. Can't see any deer today. Excellent. So guys, as I said, it was going to be one of the hottest days of the year so far. And in the car, it currently says 31 degrees, 31.5 degrees. What's it say on the weather forecast? It says 30 degrees on the weather in my location. So, I don't whether to entirely trust the temperatures that it tells you in your car or whether it's actually a more accurate measurement because it's it's actually here rather than you know what I'm saying leave a comment if you think your car temperature is accurate I just bought a Warburton's Old English White it's come with this who remembers these? I haven't seen one of them for years. Why did they stop doing that? Bread's buttered. Alright, put that away. So I'm going to get them cut in half. Lengthways and get them in my sandwich. There you go. Let's get that on. One sausage sandwich coming up. Been looking forward to this all day. Hmm. Leave a comment if you have brown sauce with bait with sausage sandwich or not. So that's going to be it for this one. Going to go and uh, pick Catherine up. I've had a little tour around. I've enjoyed today. Um, like a little mission, going around different areas and that, finding different locations. But yeah, got everything packed away. Leave no trace, people. Leave no trace. Got my little bag of rubbish ready to go in the bin. If you like the look of that little uh, induction hob and you've got a power bank or whatever, it's a great alternative. I mean, they do consume the power. But if you've got a decent one, um, I mean, I've got the solar panels as well. I never put them up today because, you know, but it, it, it would almost charge as quick as you use it really but I'll put a link to them in the description below if you're if you're interested um, little affiliate link don't cost you any more but I get a little bit of kickback from them so yeah if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up leave a comment below as well if you enjoyed any particular moment of it or, or you've got any questions or you've got any more information about any places I've been to feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. It would help us out no end. We'd really appreciate it. So, yeah. Catch you on the next one, guys. Come on, then.